are four weeks away from the April 8th total solar eclipse. Not that we're counting down or no. anything. A total solar eclipse happens when the moon passes between the Earth and the sun. Everyone in the U.S. will see at least a partial eclipse, but not all of it. So here is what you need to know. That is showing your path of totality. You will see the corona or the atmosphere of the sun peeking out around the sun. And First Alert Force David Amelotti is our eclipse expert. I don't know if that's self-titled or what, but we'll ask him. <laughs> I didn't put it in there. <laughs> I tried to see You're getting a chance to talk with NASA's scientists about what they're really jazzed about with this eclipse. Yeah, I think we all have our reasons why we're excited about the eclipse, but what about the scientists who have to study this thing yeah. and, and, and they make a living off of this? Well, there's a few reasons why there is so much excitement about what's happening in a couple of weeks. Yes, we did just see one in 2017, but when the moon's shadow sweeps across the United States this time, things will be a lot different. So for the April 8th eclipse, the path of totality will blanket 31.6 million people. That is a lot more than the 12 million back in 2017. And in terms of totality, the moon will be blocking the sun for four and a half minutes. But before any of this happens, NASA scientists are really geeking out. And that's because they say the sun is showing a lot of activity right now. And before April 8th's big show, they say this buzz may lead to even a better show for all of us. There are a lot of mysteries about how the energy gets into the corona and how that energy gets from the corona out into the solar system. That might not be your reason you tell friends why you're excited for the April 8th eclipse, but for NASA scientist Nicolene Vial, she lives to uncover the truths about the solar corona or the sun's atmosphere. And that's the part of the sun that peaks out around the moon during the total, uh, the totality phase of solar eclipse. That's the part of the sun that I study all the time and I'm so excited to actually get to see it with my own eyes. She sits on NASA's punch mission, focused on understanding how the mass and energy of the sun's corona become the solar wind that fills the solar system. To study that, NASA will launch these sounding rockets to learn how the Earth's atmosphere will respond to the decrease in sunlight during totality. The disks that we get from the coronagraphs, those instruments, the, the way the light bends around them, we can't get really deep into that other portion of the corona. And so we have to have special experiments during the eclipse that let us study those so that we can really understand how the corona is being heated, how particles are be it, being accelerated out to space as well. For weeks, NASA has reported seeing powerful bursts of radiation and NASA's heliophysics department says that means expect a show on April 8th with some flair. So the sun goes through an 11 year cycle of activity. It goes up to maximum where it peaks in activity. There's more solar flares. There's more radiation uh, coming off the sun. There are more coronal mass ejections. Even NASA needs help collecting data on the eclipse. So the agency is enlisting hundreds of college students. These students are going to launch balloons with instruments to measure how the atmosphere responds during the total sol solar eclipse because during the eclipse, the moon blocks out the main body of the sun and so the light coming to the earth and how the atmosphere responds will be um, really interesting to study. Now Dr. Vial says NASA has several apps to help you document the shape of the sun and the sounds animals will produce during the eclipse and NASA has a ton of information for you to teach the kiddos about this as well. So for more eclipse themed fun just go to this story on the First Lord 4 app to find that link. Sam, Corey.